Central Vanguard community, today is Wednesday, April the 22nd. I'm Jennifer Methvin, Chancellor at Arkansas State University BB, and welcome to Doing Things Differently, Learning Something New. As you know, if you've been following us, I'm just having brief conversations with various faculty, staff, and students to find out how the current public health crisis is impacting our classrooms, impacting how we teach and how we learn, and really also how we live. And so today I have with me Sean Taylon. He's one of our faculty members. Sean, take a few minutes and tell everybody about yourself and your program. Okay. Well, thank you for having me, Dr. Methvin. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about myself. Uh, I spent 20 years in the military as an aircraft mechanic and kind of towards the end of my hitch, I was like, hey, what am I going to do when I grow up? So um, I looked around and like I said, I worked on airplanes. I was tired of working on airplanes. Uh, and then I found this place here. I, I lived in Ward and I found ASU BB had a John Deere Ag Tech program. So I actually went through the program before I retired. So when I did retire from the Air Force, I went straight into a, a John Deere career field. And uh, so ASU BB set me up for that. And it, it really helps up my program because when I tell people about it, I tell students about it, I tell them I'm a product of the program. It worked for me. I know it'll work for you. I have buy-in in this program because I went through it and I saw what it did for me. <clears throat> um, I'm married. I have three kids. Um, my oldest, she's married, lives in Arkadelphia. My middle son, he's graduating this semester with his master's degree from the University of Arkansas. And then my youngest, he's in the CSNT program here at ASU BB. So we're still still using the college. And uh, uh, like I said, after I, I went to work in the field, I spent about seven, eight years in the field. And uh, I hurt myself, so I was like, hey, what can I do? My brain still works. And at the time, Roger Long was our department head. He says, hey, come teach. So I've been here since 2014, so it's about six years now. And I uh, absolutely love what I get to do uh, to interact with these students. Yeah, so alum, uh, faculty member, parent, the whole thing. Yes. <laughs> good, good. Okay, well, we know the drill. We try to do this in about 15 minutes, five questions, four for me, one for you. So we'll just jump jump right in. Um, it's hard to believe right now, but we've been doing alternative methods of instruction since March 16th, which seems uh, like a long time <laughs> um, at this point um, to most of us. What's been the most challenging part about taking the John Deere program uh, basically online? Well, typically my students aren't the ones that are going to go to college. So it's really hard for them to, to have that discipline to check online, to check those classes, to stay up with that. Uh, they need a lot of hand-holding. I don't say that in a bad way. It's just their brains aren't wired that way. They're hands-on learners. So um, the hardest part is teaching that hands-on program uh, without the hands-on. So what I've been trying to do is I bring the book. I, I go out in the shop. I set up my, my computer. And um, I have, like, recently I've been working on engines. So I'll have an engine set up there. I have the book there, so we follow along in the book. I talk to them. I also have uh, John Deere guidance. It's called Service Advisor, so it's their step-by-step -step on how to do a job. And I go through it, and I explain everything, and I, I reference both of them. Uh, I do close-ups of the of the images or whatever I'm doing, uh, and and it's funny too because all you can hear me, and you can see just my hands and maybe my my legs in the videos. But it's not about me; it's about what they're learning. So as long as I can focus in on that. Um, and then I do uh, tests afterward. I, I make up quizzes. So it might be a, a five, six question quiz and it all pertains to that video. So it, it, it does use the information from the book from the John Deere service advisor, but it also makes sure that they're watching the videos. Um, I did want to report YouTube has those analytics and I saw my first video I put out there that I had 10 students in my class, eight of them saw the video, 10 students took the quiz. And I was like, uh-oh, not everybody's watching it. So <laughs> so that's just one of those little tweaks you have to do. So, um, so that's what we've been doing. <clears throat> so, how, so, so explain to me how the camera works. Are you holding, are you holding a camera? No, ma'am. So I have a laptop, uh, the uh, Surface Pro. Uh -huh. It has that little kickstand on there. Yeah. So I'll put it up on stacks of uh, books or equipment okay. in there to get that, that shot down there so I can go ahead and do it all by myself. Because, you know, uh, Stephen and I are practicing that social distancing. So I'm in the big shop, uh, the, the small big shop, and he's in the large shop. 
So we don't even want to, I mean, that's kind of close. So. Right. Yeah. To be in the same space. Yeah. That's what we've yeah. been doing a lot of coming into our own space, cleaning it and, yep. and then leaving when we get done. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty interesting. Any, any, um, any reaction by your students um, yes. learning this way? Um, a lot of them say it's hard. Um, but they, at the end of those uh, quizzes, I'll say, what did you mo like most about the video and what did you learn? So a lot of them were like, well, I learned that you shouldn't wear a white shirt because one day I had a white shirt on and there was <laughs> grease all over it when I was done with the task. Um, <laughs> so, but getting their input into it, making sure that they're listening and understanding it. Um, I have a real different type of relationship with my students. Um, we used to spend in six hours or so together every day. They yeah. all have my cell phone number. They, they email me, they text me. Um, mm -hmm. And I do whatever I can to help my students. Uh, they even contact me when, hey, I'm having a problem in English. Can you help me? So I help them with those assignments so um, they can move on. Yeah, and a, and a cohort program um, like yours or like nursing, there is there, there are those relationships that they right. depend on one another and upon their faculty. Yeah. So, Mr. Taylon, do you think there's anything um, in this situation that's going to um, help us learn how to serve our students better in the future? Um, well, yeah, uh, <clears throat> it's going to allow us to be able to uh, have alternate methods of instruction. So um, if something like this does come up again, we, we kind of can set up for it. I know when this pandemic first kicked off, Dr. Gunner, you know, said, hey, everybody, you need a plan, put all your classes online. And I went and talked to him. I said, there's no way I can do that. It's a hands-on program. What do I? And he's like, well, if you could just have enough material to last a week, I think that's all it's going to take. Well, here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> so, so we have all had to use technology. Um, I'm a paper type of guy. So I, I like doing paper tests. I'll grade it myself. Um, I, I ask my students, again, they are, um, they're very smart when it comes to using their hands and they can do the mechanical tasks, when it comes to putting answers on paper, it's kind of hard for them. So I tell them, I don't care if you draw a picture of how the gears work. If you can't tell me the words on how it works, draw me a picture. I mean, that's telling me the same thing. I see that you're getting the idea. So you can't do that with Canvas. You can't draw a picture, you know? So, um, and, and I like to have a lot of open-ended questions to make sure that they do understand it. And you can do that with Canvas, but it, it is a lot harder. Um, so a lot of times we just do the easier route and we put multiple choice. And I, I don't like giving them the answer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of those four are the answers. So I don't like, I want them to use their minds because when they're out in the field, they have to come up with their own idea and work on it from there, not have four answers and choose one of them. Right. So it's that critical thinking. Yeah, yeah, good. So um, talk a little bit about what's been most personally challenging for you um, in this situation. Well, I kind of hit on it already, but missing my students, uh, spending those six hours with them a day, you know everything about them. Uh, you, you know who's dating who, you know mom's in the hospital, you know, I mean, it's just, they're my family and I spend two years of, with them. Right. A lot of times when, when I give tours and the parents come in, I talk to the parents and I say, you know, I have students, I have children, these students ages. So they're going to, I'm going to treat them like they're my kids. Okay. I'm going to take care of them. If they screw up in my shop, I'm going to yell at them because if they screw up, they could get hurt or possibly killed. Right. So we have these safety issues and a lot of them are like, thank you so much. You know, I need, they need that. They need that structure. So, um, that's, that's one of the hardest things is not being able to, to have those day in day out um, yeah. conversations because I have an open door policy whenever they're here my door is open when I'm in my office they'll come in here they'll sit down they'll just chit chat and tell me about work and what's going on so um, and then I, the next hardest thing is talking to myself so when you do those videos um, <laughs> a lot of times when, our, when, our, when we're lecturing in the classroom you kind of see if the light bulb goes off or, or if it doesn't and when they don't go off I say all right hey field trip we all get up, we go out in the shop, and we'll grab whatever it is we're talking about and work through it to make sure everybody understands. Well, now I don't have that, I don't have that guide. I, I don't know what's going on. So I'm constantly asking them through emails and uh, text messages, hey, what do you need? What are you missing? Are you, are you okay? You good? So 
that's that's got to be those are the hardest parts yeah yeah and in your case in this program we have students from from across several states right yeah and so there's some challenges there it's not just as simple as they're up the road 20 miles they're um, in other states and in some cases you know um, states where things are maybe a little bit more uh, advanced in right. the pandemic than we are here in Arkansas and that you know you have to worry about them as well I think <laughs> I, I have four of them in the hot spots so yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's but they're out there working every day, going out to the fields. So right. um, that's good social distancing too. Um, that's true. Know, the field, you know. So that's true. That's true. They do have that. Well, all right. It's only fair. I've asked three questions. Now it's your turn to ask one of me. Okay. Um, so I've been thinking about this a little bit. Um, where do you see ASU BB like within the next year? Do you see us being a, a stronger campus? Uh, full classes, or do you think we're going to be weaker and, and struggling to fill our seats? Well, you know, that's that's pretty interesting and, and, and something I've been thinking about a whole lot as well. So, um, you know, for instance, we're in the middle of trying to make this budget with all these budget cuts balanced, and so we're trying to make a really good guess on what we think our enrollment will be even this fall, right? right. And so the difficulty of that is, will we have... Um, well, we have local students whose parents are now a little hesitant to send them off <laughs> um, away from home uh, to go to school. And, and so in that case, will we actually perhaps um, look at more students on our campuses um, from the local area in the fall? Or uh, will the impact be that everybody's just pretty conservative and pretty concerned and they just put off? Are more students gonna take that gap year? you know, and take a year off and think about what they want to do and kind of see what the next year brings. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're told it'll be about a year from now at the soonest that we would have um, something equivalent to a flu shot to help us deal with this um, moving forward. Oops, I just lost you. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. one off my office. <laughs> Um, yeah, they do that, don't they? Yeah. Um, and so that, that predicting that is very, is very difficult. We do know that generally when there's a downturn in the economy, if there becomes um, some assistance for people to retrain so that they can enter re-enter the job market, that tends to strengthen our enrollment. Um, and, and I think that's one of the things we have to do is, is to prepare for that. Despite the fact that we too are in a pretty bad economic downturn, um, we have to be prepared for those students who may look to us and say, okay, life is different now. Um, and I'm gonna take this opportunity to retrain to do something different. And so in those cases, I think we'll see an increase um, enrollment in many of our programs. Um, but you just don't know the timing of that. I do think, Sean, a, a year from now, none of you all, me, none of us will be teaching and working exactly the same that we did. We've been talking about it in simple ways like, um, you know, we've been a little hesitant to, to pull Zoom up and bring people from the other campuses on the screen for a meeting. And by golly, the last four or five weeks, we've gotten pretty good at that and you can make it work. Um, yeah. And so we may be running up and down the road um, a, a little less um, so that we become a little bit more efficient. Now, you, you all know me, I, I value my time. I wanna be on the Haver Springs campus. I wanna be in Searcy. I, I wanna be all over the place. Uh, but as far as meetings and efficiency, I think that'll change a little bit. I think we also may, and maybe this is a hope, that we become a little bit more adept at being flexible for our students. We talk all the time about the many challenges that our students face as sometimes non-traditional students, under-resourced students, um, a change in a job schedule, the fall through of a babysitter, all kinds of things impact. Well, um, we have learned that there are ways to capture our content that are a little different. Um, and we can supplement what we do face-to-face -face in a classroom a little bit more so that maybe our students uh, might be able to stay in touch with us and not feel like, well, my work schedule's changed, I've got to drop. Maybe we'll have avenues and pathways um, to help keep them engaged and keep them, keep them going. Um, that's not a very good answer to your question. I am as curious as you are <laughs> about what we're gonna look like um, a year from now. I am, yeah. Good. Well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay. All right. Well, my last class, uh, question always is, um, what's the silver lining? What's the silver lining for John Deere students, for ASUBB, for John and his family, for our state, for our nation? What's the good that's going to come out of all this? Uh, well, I know a lot of people have been saying it, but it's true. We've slowed down. Um, we've gotten to go back to those family roots and uh, spending that, that, that time with our family. Um, maybe uh, reigniting those values. So getting back to what's really important. <clears throat> uh, so that's, that's something that's personally uh, the silver lining to this because it's caused me to slow down some and, uh, and just be thankful for what I have. Um, but during this pandemic, uh, we've seen a lot of jobs, a lot of people lose jobs. And we've seen a lot of essential jobs that are out there. So we have all these essential workers um, that aren't able to work from home. They have to go to work. Um, and something I was thinking about today was we have such a plethora of programs here at ASUBB that we offer these essential jobs. We offer this training. We have the technical certificates, the, uh, the degree programs to get these students up and running. Um, so I think, you know, we can provide that training. Um, I want to say it was the webinar that the ACC had. They were talking about how out of the, out of the people that have been laid off or, you know, relieved from their duties, um, only 50% of them are going to be able to get hired back to their jobs. So what's the other 50% going to do? So kind of like what you just said, what you see us in a year, um, it, it kind of piggybacks on that. I, I'm hoping that we have full classes that we're training the, these people uh, to, you know, in our local community to go ahead to get those essential jobs. And then if, the, if something like this ever happens again, they should be secure because right. they have the, those uh, qual or the skills, the trained skills. So, and hopefully yeah. they come to ASUBB to get those. So that's a silver lining for, for the institution and for those that we serve. I, that's yes, a, that's a very, that's a very good perspective. You know, I, I say all the time, um, that we're caught up a little bit in um, a generation or two that values some work over the other work and that all intelligences aren't always equally um, valued by some people. Uh, this could change that perspective. Um, right. This could change that perspective when we see how badly we depend upon um, some of the graduates of our programs health professions, those who can go out there and fix the electricity lines, those who can keep the tractors running so that we can keep eating. Um, it's really valuable, really valuable yeah. um, and rewarding professions. And they're, um, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good silver lining. You've made my, you've made my <laughs> afternoon, sir. <laughs> no, whether our welding programs, our diesel programs, our agriculture programs, our nursing programs, I mean, we have it all. Right. You know? So it's, it's, we're not for not. We're here right. for a reason. So. Teaching. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, lots, lots of great things like that. Well, awesome. Well, that's a great way um, to end there, Mr. Taylon. Thank you so much for your time. I've really enjoyed um, our conversation. I look forward to the next time um, that we are together. I have lined up for us a student from our Haber Springs campus who's also about to be one of our graduates. Um, Nick Arnold, and he is a delightful young man, and I know everyone will enjoy that conversation. Thank you for your time, Mr. Taylon. Thank you. Thank you for talking to me. Stay safe. Yes, ma'am. You too.